A member of my team spent five weeks on board a Doctors Without Borders ship, filming their attempts to rescue migrants in the Mediterranean. We have just received a position. We have got a type of boat and a number of people on board, approximately. We are looking for something very small, usually. It is in this area that boats uh, starting from Libya start to be in trouble. Uh, we witness firsthand the almost daily battle playing out near the shores of Europe. A desperate race between humanitarian NGOs. We have a small wooden boat. I would say with approximately 20 people on board. And the Libyan Coast Guard, which has been created, equipped, trained, and funded by the European Union to intercept migrants and turn them away from Europe. <laughs> For the migrants, men, women, and children, even after making it as far as international waters, the real danger awaits. They are taking the ultimate risk on the outlaw ocean, a journey that could be the difference between freedom or death. Two-thirds of the planet is covered by water. It's our planet's wildest frontier, breathtaking as much as it is vital to all life. A place of discovery and endless reinvention, a metaphor for freedom, as well as a profoundly dystopian realm where the darkest of all humanities play out. Over 50 million people work at sea, and human rights and environmental abuses often occur with impunity. Six, six, of you. six people. We are sleeping in here. So hot. This is un I've never ever seen this bad. My name is Ian Urbina. As a journalist, I've spent the past decade reporting from this lawless frontier. I run an investigative journalism organization called the Outlaw Ocean Project that reports about crimes happening in this space. This is the Outlaw Ocean. Bonjour, English, Français. These people are attempting to sail one of the most treacherous routes into Europe, from Libya across the Mediterranean Sea to Italy, a distance of less than 200 miles. Bienvenue, ça va? Tu es malade? On va aller sur le bateau et ça ira bien, ok? According to the UN, up to 100,000 migrants make this journey every year. Although the number of crossings has recently dropped, the death toll has seen a steep rise. Good morning, salam, salam alaikum, bonjour. The migrants are predominantly from sub-Saharan Africa, 
but also Syria and other parts of the Middle East. Many of them are fleeing conflict, violence, and persecution, or they are climate migrants, escaping droughts and famine. Either way, they've had few options but to rely on smugglers to get them this far. الانقاذ الثاني كان عندنا عدد كبير من السوريين مع كل شخص من سوريا الحبيبه كان يطلع السفينه كنت كنت اشعر انه في قطعه من سوريا عم عم بتقرب مني وانا عم بقرب منها as the migrants are checked in on board the threats from the libyan coast guard continue to crackle over the radio The Doctors Without Borders ship is careful to conduct rescues only in designated international waters, but this is contested by the Coast Guard. Gaddafi is dead, is dead, man. In 2011, Libyan leader Gaddafi was toppled and killed in an insurrection sparked by the Arab Spring and supported by a U.S.-led invasion. News footage and frantic mobile phone videos captured a country that had descended into chaos as armed militia groups began to take control. Now, tens of thousands of migrants are using Libya as a launching point into Europe, and the EU has outsourced the job of stopping them to Libya, a failed state run by militias. Enormément de moyens sont déployés de manière à ce que les personnes qui tentent de fuir ces pays en guerre soient interceptées en mer et ne puissent pas parvenir sur le continent européen. The UN believes militia groups fighting each other in Tripoli are involved in the lucrative trafficking trade of African migrants to Europe. Some have close ties with the country's EU-funded Libyan Coast Guards. The European Union, wary of the financial and political costs of receiving migrants from sub-Saharan Africa, has equipped and trained the Libyan Coast Guard. They effectively function as the EU's shadow immigration system a quasi-military organization that patrols the Mediterranean, sabotaging humanitarian rescue operations and capturing migrants before they reach European soil. On parle de dizaines de millions d'euros de soutien accordé aux gardes-côtes libyens en termes de formation, en termes de matériel, en l'occurrence de bateaux. On parle d'avions, affrétés entre autres par l'agence Frontex, mais également des drones plus récemment. There was a drone flying, overflying us, and overflying the position, a really not high at all. I never saw a drone so low like this. We were able to identify this as a drone owned by the EU-backed Frontex agency and capable of operating continuously for up to 45 hours. They have a pattern going to our ship and go back there and circle around. The Frontex agency maintains a near constant surveillance of the Mediterranean through drones like this. When it detects a migrant boat, it sends photographs and location information to local government agencies and other partners in the region, but does not typically inform humanitarian vessels. 
tenemos el tiempo en nuestra contra, sabiendo que si guardacostas libios llegan primero, los van a devolver a un sitio que no es seguro. Once the Coast Guard has the coordinates, it races to the boats, sometimes firing on migrants or directing warning shots at humanitarian ships. This is Mayday Relay, Mayday Relay, Mayday Relay. The shooting, yeah, the shooting. Yeah. So-called Libyan Coast Guard, please keep your distance. Don't shoot at the people. The EU and Libya claim they are rescuing migrants from drowning. The truth, however, is that they're actually arresting people in international waters and returning them to prisons in a war zone where extortion, rape, and murder are common. There are a lot of human trafficking. And they, they say, like slavery, they sell one people to another people to another people, like this. This is the system of Libya. I have visited Libya and seen firsthand the detention camps that the captured migrants are returned to. This is drone footage I filmed at the Al Mabani camp and the scared and abused detainees. A portion of EU money has gone to support what has become a modern day gulag, a prison system that the UN has classified as amounting to possible crimes against humanity. And back on the Doctors Without Border ship, a Sudanese migrant testified to the conditions in these camps. These people's futures lie in limbo, stranded at sea until a country will grant them permission to dock. Their hopes and dreams for freedom and a better life is fueling a multi-million dollar business where militia groups profit from brutal detention centers and mafia coast guards act with impunity. One thing is clear, as European governments remain committed to anti-migrant programs in Libya, the true implications of such policies will continue to happen out of sight and in the blind spot that is the outlaw ocean. Yeah.